Okay, so in the last part, we were making some adjustments to the area light that we were using for the flood lamp on the side of the house. So one thing that we need to do in order to get this light to show up a little bit more is we need to take the intensity up. But before we do that, I want to turn off all the other lights because I mainly just want to concentrate on this light and what it's creating. So I'm going to turn off all these other lights because I don't want any of that orange glow from the inside of the house to come out. So we have the light set to 35 for the intensity and I'm going to render the region there. And we're going to see what this looks like with the other lights turned off. And more than likely we're going to need to take the intensity of this light from 35 up to, I don't know, maybe something above 100. Alright, so you can see we're getting some nice lighting there on the wall. And we're also getting some lighting over here against the side where I wanted it. but. A flood lamp of this size should at least be providing some type of diffuse or specular lighting here on the table below. So I just want to turn up the intensity of this light until this light starts illuminating the table that's directly below it. Because right now it doesn't look like it's doing that and it doesn't look very real. So I'm going to take the intensity of this light up to maybe a value of 125. So I'm going to go ahead and render that region one more time and hopefully a value of 125 here for the intensity will be as high as we need to go because I really don't want to go too high with it. Alright so there we go there's the light and uh, it's producing a nice little highlight and reflection over here in the window and it's also giving us some light over here but you can see it's still not illuminating that table like I want it to. And let's take the intensity up to like I don't know let's just do for kicks let's try 225. And let's see what happens with 225. It's really not going to make that much of a difference anyway because we're going to have the lighting uh, from those sliding glass door windows there that's going to be illuminating the table. So it's not really going to be a big issue if this light actually hits the table or not because you're really not going to be able to see it and your eye's not going to be able to pick it up. But anyway, as you can see, uh, we're starting to get a little bit of light to show up now on the table. So for the time being, a value of 225 for the intensity. I'm just going to leave it there and we'll just see how that goes. Alright, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this light and we want to move it around. And the reason for that is because we want to make a duplicate of it and we have another light over here. Let's see if I can find it. There it is right there. You can see we've got this little bowl that sits right there and I'm wondering if that's the only one. Yeah, that looks like the only one. Okay, so we have this light here. So what we want to do is we want to take this exterior flood and we want to move it. What I want to do is just kind of zero out the coordinates for it. And I want to move it down over here and place it inside of this bowl-shaped light housing here. And it needs to come up. I need to unhide it. And this can be a little bigger. So let's go back to the area light tab and let's just take this radius up to maybe eight. We'll push that up. You can see it's starting to come out of the top. We don't want to do that. All right, so I think that will look okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take this and let's go back to the common tab and let's just leave that one the same color for now. Go back to our camera and I'm just going to turn off all these other lights and we mainly want to concentrate on this area right here. Okay so it looks like we're going to need to go a little brighter. So let's just take this and let's go up to 400. Why not? Let's just really take it up there. Now there's another trick I'm going to show you, something else that you can do. So let's just try this 400 real quick and see what this does. And then we'll try another little trick. Actually not a trick, it's more of an adjustment. But uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a moment. We'll just let this finish rendering. Okay, so we're picking up on the inside now. You can see it's lighting up. There we go. Now it's catching some of the snow there. You can see it is highlighting some of the snow. 
So that looks pretty good. Now, one more thing that you could do, and this is the trick that I was talking about in the V-Ray light tag. Down here we have this effect diffuse and effect specular. So right now both of them are on and both of them have a contribution value of one. So let's take the diffuse contribution and let's go up to maybe two. And let's render that again. All right, so you can see uh, just by taking that value up to two, you can see just how much brighter this has gotten. It's not a lot, but it is an increase. So this really just depends on what you want to have there. Personally, I think a value of one will work just fine. So you can experiment between these two, this diffuse contribution as well as the intensity. If you feel like you're taking your intensity too high, what you could do is just take it back down and then increase the diffuse contribution up a few levels, maybe two or three perhaps, just to kind of even things out. But in this case, we're not seeing the light directly because it's being hidden behind this upper wall here with the paneling. So an intensity count of 400 seems to be working okay for us. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that light off as well. All right, now I believe there's a couple of more little areas here where we have some lights. You can see we've got this weird looking thing right here, which is sticking out of the wall. And we also have one out here that would actually be, and I think I just moved that. Let me undo that. We also have this one here that's sitting out here. So what we wanna do is we want to make this a light, this little tube thing that's sticking out. This needs to be a light and the same applies to this one here. That needs to be just a little light. And that's going to be kind of like an exterior hallway light that you're going to have outside your house just to kind of illuminate a, like maybe a small walkway going around maybe the outside of your house. It's not really going to be that bright. Uh, it serves a purpose of just illuminating like a footpath or something like that. That's all it is. It's like a small wall lamp. So what we want to do here is we want to go into polygon mode real quick. And this is just going to be something really easy to do. And we're just going to do a loop selection. Oh, I've got boundary loop selected. We want to do a loop selection in polygon mode right there on the back side. And actually, you can see all these polygons are actually uh, reversed. The normal is reversed. They're all blue when they should be orange. So what I want to do is I want to hit UF to bring up the fill selection. And I want to select all the polygons of that object, which is going to be called the odd light 2. Now notice how if we deselect it, if we hit U, F, all right, so notice that all of these polygons are blue color. If we hit U, R to reverse the normals, now they're orange. Orange is the color that they should be. Now some of you may be using a different color layout. Now Cinema 4D allows you to uh, choose different colors. However, I have the default color here of orange and blue. You want your normals to be facing the right direction. Otherwise, you get improper reflection, improper specular patterns, and I believe it also has a tendency to affect the refraction as well. So you want to make sure that your normals are facing the right direction. So all you have to do is just select all the polygons here and then hit U, R, and that will reverse them. Now blue means that they're facing the wrong way. Hit UR again. Now we've got orange. Now that's the correct way. All right, so we'll do a loop selection there. Then we're going to hit UF for fill. Hold down shift and then select that outer part of this tube. Then we want to use the split command. It's going to split it off, but we need to delete this original one. So we'll delete it. Go into point mode. We have all of these points here, so we'll just deselect any points that might be selected. Use the optimize command. That will get rid of them. And now we've got odd light 2, which I'm just going to call this odd light 2 base. And I'm just going to call this odd light 2. Okay, and I'll just make that a child of that. So here we have odd light 2. And what we want to do is we want to make that light. So in order to do that, we want to take our floodlight here and we want to duplicate it and we're just going to call this odd light 2. We'll turn it on 
go into the intensity, take it down to one, and we want to go into the area light tab and we want to change the area type from sphere to mesh. Now it's going to ask you what geometry do you want to use? So what we want to do is we want to go down here and we want to find odd light 2, drop that in, and now we jump back into the camera. Actually we really don't need to jump into the camera at the moment. What we could do is just render using the editor camera all right, so you can see it is lit up, but it needs to be brighter. So what we'll do is we'll just back out here a little bit and we'll take this and we'll take the intensity up to, I don't know, maybe a value of 10. All right, so that's looking a little better. Let's go into the color and let's make this more of a yellowish tone. And then we'll take this up to maybe a value of 20. Don't want to go too much with it. Let's jump back into the camera and let's see what that area looks like with just that one light turned on. We just want to get just a little bit of illumination there, just to know that there's something there that's just kind of providing some illumination. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. It's, we're getting a little bit of uh, pickup there on the ground as well as the wall so I think that'll look pretty good so what we could do is we could take this and duplicate it and in the V-Ray tag what we need to do is we need to jump out of the camera go back over here to this one and we need to do the same thing to this one that we did to the other one so we need to control A you can see that they're reversed so we need to align them so just hit UR to reverse them UL for the loop selection UF for the fill, hold down shift, fill that in, split it off, delete that original geometry, point mode, optimize. We need to go down here and we need to click on that outer part and that's just going to be odd light. This here is the base. So I'm just going to rename that to base. And we need to go up here to this light tag, area light tab. And odd light 2 needs to be changed to odd light. So we'll jump back into the camera and we'll turn just that one on. We'll render that little region. Alright, so we're getting a little bit of light to show up there, which is exactly what we want. These little lights are just very small lamps. They have uh, somewhat of a soft, diffuse lighting look to them. This is not going to be something huge and big like I said these things are mainly just used on the exterior of your house just to illuminate a footpath or something like that okay so we've got all that set up so now let's just turn all the lights back on I'm gonna hide them from the viewport and let's just turn the landscaping back on as well and I'm just going to make a little bit of a preview render here that encompasses most of the house. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just sit here and we'll just watch this render and then once it finishes then uh, I'll go ahead and end this part and in the next part we'll get started with the V-Ray textures and we'll start applying the textures and the concrete textures and things to the house and the leaf material to the trees and all that kind of stuff and then we'll build the snow shader and then we'll get into the final rendering. Okay, so as you can see, it has finished rendering, and it's rather a low quality rendering, so you'll just have to ignore some of the blotchiness and these artifacts up here in the area along the walls and things. Now, one thing that I see is that we've got this area here that we need to apply. It looks like we need to also apply a window, this frosted glass material to that, so that's just something that I forgot to do, but that's not a big deal. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and end this part now, and we'll keep moving along in the next part.